Thank you for tuning in to the Lillian McMorris Show. I'm your host, R. Byron Stringer, and I'm sitting in for Lillian McMorris while she is recovering. We want to send prayers and hugs and kisses right out her way, and she'll be back again soon. Well, we have some really interesting guests today, and I'd like to get started with our first guest, Mr. Cameron Miller. Welcome, Mr. Cameron Miller. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I call you Cam. It sounds weird calling you Cameron Miller. <laughs> like, hey, Cam. <laughs> yeah, but my mama named me Cameron Miller. Cameron H. Miller. So, Cameron you know, H. Miller. We want to honor her. <laughs> you are an incredible person. I, um, one thing I've always admired about you is that you are creative, and you're a thinker and a visionary. So, tell us what is it that you've been doing lately? Wow. Well, you know, I like to say, first of all, thank you for that. I like to say that I am truly just walking in the steps that are ordered for me. Um, I, you know, most recently, well, what I do is I'm a film production. Uh, I have a film production company called Studio 11 Films, um, along with my business partner, Sharon Tomlinson, who's the CEO of the company. It was based in Atlanta, and we've been able to spread our wings to Las Vegas to um provide film training and ladders of opportunity to the film industry for uh, young people in our community here in Las Vegas. So uh, what we've most recently done, we've done uh, a couple of cohorts of production training uh, classes here in Las Vegas that resulted in uh, two short films, one entitled Two Roads, another entitled Reconnect. And um, as a company wide, what we do, we've done a film called Skin. Uh, which just premiered on TV One nationwide. Congratulations, thank, sir. Thank you. And our whole goal with our films is to create content that matters um, and that inspire the viewing audience to make a better choice about their life moving forward. You know, you said you've been able to spread your wings to Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and wings help us fly. Absolutely. But you're not flying alone. You're teaching our kids how to fly. Absolutely. So when you do these, these films, you're teaching what to our kids? What is it that they're learning that's really helping them fly and soar? Well, you know, it's um, it's, a, it's a plethora of things from the exposure to something new that they can see a new opportunity to in inspiring and encouraging them to be creative. Um, we teach uh, through our program, they learn time management skills, um, uh, so many different things to problem solving and conflict resolution um, to onset etiquette and how to to develop their ideas from a thought to uh, actually putting it on page and then taking it all the way through to production to post production. So um, we're really inspiring them to realize that their ideas, although they are not tangible in the beginning, they can become very tangible if they want it and they work hard and move forward. So they can have a vision and actually see it from the beginning to the end Absolutely. because you taught them how to fly. Well, I won't say so much I taught them how to fly. Our team taught them how to fly. Um, I'm less of the teacher. We have um, Avery Williams who comes out of Morehouse College um, in Atlanta and he comes out to, to work with our group. Um, he's a, a great writer. He's written several major film projects, but He's over the cinema uh, television department at Morehouse, and so we are. Awesome. All, it's awesome. It's a blessing to have him to be able to come out and work with us. And then also uh, my partner Sharon Tomlinson, who the eleven 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 project, which is the program, she's the brainchild behind it. She's mm -hmm. it, it's her vision. It's her baby, and uh, she comes out and she teaches. She's like a, a marketing and genius and she does writing and all that stuff. So they run with the education por portion of it. I tend to be more of the producer that just kind of connects the dots and makes sure that they have what they need to, to move forward. So I know you're trying to downplay what you do, but we all know that Cameron Miller is a mover and a shaker in Las Vegas. In fact, you were recognized just a few days ago for being that mover and a shaker with an incredible award. Tell us about it. I was there. I saw it. You were there because you were also a recipient of, of the award from Commissioner Lawrence. We, both were. Wasn't we were. I believe you won the uh received the community Doctor Doctor Reverend Doctor Marion Bennett Award for Community Service. Yeah, yes. that's, that's who's a good friend of mine, he's a mentor. He's an incredible, incredible man. Yeah, no, that that is awesome. I was uh fortunate to receive the Bob Bailey um Arts and Entertainment Award. Wow. So it was um, definitely a um, 
you never know who's paying attention. You never know who's watching. And we're all watching you. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and it, it's just, it makes you feel good to know that when you keep your head down and you do the work, there are people paying attention. And um, to be acknowledged by uh, Commissioner Weekly, who I've known my pretty much my entire life in Las Vegas, um, and have looked up to and have admired and have seen as a leader and a role model for him to say, you know what, Cameron, what you're doing is worthy of recognition. Man, that blows you away. Like, it, it just, it, it, it really made me feel good, but it wasn't me alone. You know what I'm saying? And, and being able to um, acknowledge those who help to build anything that anybody sees that they think is me, you know, you just have to say, look, no, it's a team. And we do it together. And not just our team, but also the team at Nevada Partners, Monica Ford and Tiffany Tyler, who initially saw what we were doing and said, hey, wait a minute, this is what we need in Las Vegas. Aaron Ford, I'm sorry, Aaron Ford, <laughs> who, you know, he's our state senator, who is a champion for bringing more and more film. It takes all of those components, the city of Las Everybody Vegas, workforce connections. It takes all of that for us to have even been able to have the opportunity to work with the young people that we work with. So um, it, it, that's that's really out of the box thinking, isn't it? It's, it is because people think it's about them, but it's not. It can't be. You can't do it alone. You. None of us, anybody that's ever gotten recognition for anything, did it by themselves. And it's being able to acknowledge those who all put played a piece of, uh, who put a piece in the puzzle that, you know, it, it matters. To even you and all the work that you've done with toe tag monologues, being a police officer, all of that stuff, every leader in this community that has ever done anything, they supported, they were a part of us being able to receive anything, any acknowledgement that we received. So, yeah, there's been a lot of trailblazers who've definitely gone before us. Yeah. And they've really paved the way. And it's really up to us to continue to carry that torch. Absolutely. And that's what I really admire about you is you're definitely carrying the torch. I'm carrying the torch. There's so many others. Mm -hmm. We have to carry it because there's children who need us. Absolutely. And we're just really saving people's lives. It's not just a great program. We're not just trying to put something out there or raise some money. We're really trying to save somebody's life and make exactly. a difference. Exactly. So I think that's really wonderful. So tell me, what is it like actually putting together theater and being involved in the arts in Las Vegas and doing film? And what is all that like? You're involved in so many different things. What is that like? Well, you know, it, it's, it's a challenge in a lot of ways, but it's such a rewarding experience because um, we have a city that's known to the world for entertainment. It's the mm -hmm. entertainment capital of the world. You come here to have a good time and be entertained. Um, yet, as you know, we've struggled in our city to really build a cultural arts environment that mm -hmm. nurtures that and, and it grows. Fortunately, I think that Las Vegas is in such a, um, a prime time in its uh, history or in its, you know, its being here that the arts and culture is really taking a foothold in the city and is growing and busting out at the seams and we're starting to see how talented some of the, the, the young people are, some ta how talented some of the, um, <clears throat> just our community is as a whole from creating projects to, you know, starring and being on stage. And, and so it's a challenge because you have uh, some uh, old school mindsets that don't necessarily allow you to flow that you, the way that you need to, but it's a beautiful thing because those mindsets are being changed. And uh, we're really about to walk into a new era of culture, culture and understanding truly what Las Vegas' own culture is. Because you know for so long, it was Las Vegas didn't have any culture. Yeah. No, we got culture. No. We're, we're, we got, we're, co we got we're, culture. And we're building that culture. And that's Absolutely. a beautiful thing. What would you say to parents who say, hey, I need help with my kids? My kids are pretty artsy. They like to dance or sing, or I can see them being on television or on the stage. What would you say to those parents, and how would you inspire them to get those kids involved in something? First thing I would say is don't ever tell your child they can't. Don't ever tell them they're not good enough. Don't ever tell them that their dance step isn't strong enough. You encourage them to get better at it because anybody can learn it. Mm -hmm. 
the stuff that we do, yes, it's inspired. It's, we're creative because it comes from within us. We have to find it within us to attach to the music, to the, the lyrics, um, the, the song or whatever the words, the script. We have to find that within us. It's in with each and every one of us because that's how God created us. So instead of discouraging them or saying, yo, don't do that or you're not good enough at that, the first thing I would say is encourage your kid to become better. Encourage them to be the best that they can be at whatever it is they try to do. And you can only do that by making sure that when you see your child has an interest in something, to go ahead and sign them up for dance classes or music classes or writing classes um, so that they start to develop that gift in a way that it will make room for them. Because you never know what they like until they're actually exposed to a little bit of everything. When was it that you first made up your mind that you really wanted to get into show business um, being a movie star mr hollywood hmm, well i think i first decided uh, i first thought that i wanted to be a news anchor um and but i think that was my my safe uh goal i think i really wanted to be an actor but i thought that i could be a news anchor that would be safer <laughs> <laughs> um however i started to uh take classes um, in about 17 years old, actually, with another industry giant in Las Vegas that's a good friend and manager to both of us, actually, Kim Ms. Flowers. Ms. Flowers. Ms. Kim yes, Flowers. Ms. Flowers, we love you. <laughs> yes, and so I started working with her um, in training and developing as a talent, and so much of what I learned in studying to be an actor trans, uh, transcended every other arena that I went in in life. And um, that was when it first hit. I think I was probably about seven, or actually 18 years old. I performed at the at CSN, which was Community College of Southern Nevada back wow, then. I remember that. <laughs> um, under the direction of Tony Award winning Zakes Mokai, um, we did Fences. Oh, wow. And I played Quarry. And that was my first time on stage. And after that, I was done. I was big. I, I had a, probably because a big old in, bite. Yeah. You're in everything. No, but that really, um, there's something once you, once you perform on stage and stage and film are such different animals. Mm -hmm. Once you perform on stage and you experience delivering something and getting emotional feedback from an audience in that moment, there's nothing else like it. So if a parent wants to get their kids involved with some of the projects that you're doing, mm -hmm. how can they find you or what do you have coming up next? Absolutely. Well, what we have coming up next is our next season of the 111.11 project here in Las Vegas. So um, you can always go to our website, studio11films.com. That's studio, the number 11, so that's 11films.com. Films with an S. Studio11films.com. That's the last time I'm going to say it. <laughs> and you can always send a request there or just check out our site and find out what we have going on, when you can sign up for things. You can also follow us on social media everywhere at Studio11films. Studio11films on all social media. Well, that's incredible. Well, Mr. Cameron Miller, thank you so much for being on the Lily McMorris Show. You're doing some wonderful things in Las Vegas, and we just want to thank you and celebrate you. Thank you so much. Lillian, I love you so very much, and I am grateful to be on your show. I'm missing you, though, but this brother with this fly jacket, I mean, he's cool to hang out with, but I can't wait to see your beautiful <laughs> face and sit on this stage with you again. Get well soon, Lillian. We have another guest coming up, so you just sit tight, and you'll see somebody who's very incredible, wonderful vocals, who's making a difference in Las Vegas. The Lillian McMorris Show is produced by Tigo & Associates Productions. Multi-camera shoots either in our studio or on location. That's Tigo & Associates Productions. Welcome back everyone to the Lillian McMorris Show where we have a wonderful guest here by the name of Mr. Ken Young. Hey man. Welcome, Mr. Young. Glad How are you to doing, be here. Sir? Fantastic, man. Fantastic. Glad to be here. You are just a phenomenal man. Let me just start out by saying that. Thank you, man. You are you have multitasked at being a police officer and being an entertainer all at the same time. 
Yes, those are a couple of the hats that I wear, man. And uh, kind of following your footsteps. Uh, <laughs> Am you, I your mentor? Are you you're mind? one of my mentors as it relates to law enforcement <laughs> and entertainment. Wow, I believe that. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. That yeah. was you and uh, at that time Anthony Brown that kind of showed me that I could do both. Oh, no, you were doing this way before I was doing it. So, no, man, I promise you. <laughs> well, you are an incredible man because uh, I can name several occasions where I've been in a room or at a venue and I heard a voice. And I'm like, that person could really sing. And as soon as I went in to see who it was, Ken Young. Thank you, man. I'm doing all the things that you taught me. So who are some of the people that you sang with? Um, over the years, I've worked with, I started off as, as a gospel artist. So I, well, I'm still a gospel artist. But I started off in gospel with the likes of uh, people like Daryl Coley, uh, the Hawkins. Uh, other friends of mine. Yeah, people in the Bay Area. When I got to Las Vegas, I traveled a lot with the military bands. And then as I got out of the military, became a police officer several years later, started working with uh, David Cassidy in the FX show, Tommy Toon. And the last 13 years or so, I worked with Gladys Knight and her brother the Bubba, Gladys, Gladys, Gladys Knight, the Empress. Yes. So I've traveled and had an opportunity to be with some great people. Travel all around the world. All around the world, man, doing what I enjoyed and got paid doing it. Can't have a better life. An incredible voice, incredible gift. Yeah, this has been awesome, man. I'm very thankful, very blessed. You know, to be able to do what I enjoy doing. I was at a, was it a Michelle Pharrell concert? Michelle Pharrell. Um, Jonathan Butler. Jonathan Butler. Yeah, and Rochelle Pharrell. And Rochelle Pharrell. And they were passing the mic around to people. And somebody slipped up and passed the mic to you. And you know, <laughs> generally people can't sing. But by the time you got that mic, you wore them out. It was a great opportunity. Uh, to this day, uh, I get the opportunity to still keep in touch with Jonathan Butler. And uh, he still remembers that. That's awesome. So in addition to singing, you're also a police officer. Yes. Well, not just a police officer. You're a captain, aren't you? Yes. Uh, for the last 25 years, I've had the opportunity to be a part of a great organization, the Clark County School District Police Department, where I am now one of the leaders of the department. Uh, I'm a division captain, still working as a public information officer. As it is right now, I'm the longest standing PIO, a public information officer, in the county, uh, 20 plus years. That's incredible. Congratulations. That's incredible. And it's a little crazy, too. <laughs> <laughs> because there's a lot of stuff happening out there. Yes, yes. So you're out there keeping our kids safe. Yes, yes. I'm a part of a, a great team, man, that's out there doing our best to keep our kids safe in the communities and at schools. So 25 years. Yes. That's a long time. How much longer are you going to do, you think? Well, uh, 25 is normally the goal. Uh, that's the point where you kind of break even and say, okay, at this point now, what am I going to do now that I'm almost grown? You know, So I'm still trying to figure that out. So I'm gonna go a little bit longer and see what see what the see what the Lord says and see what I'm guiding and see where I'm at. I did 26 and a half years with Metro, and I'll tell you what, in retirement, retirement is a beautiful thing. And that's what I keep hearing, man. Everybody that has retired, man, like yourself, you know, you guys look so refreshed, no stress, uh, you just relax, look 10 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm waiting. I'm excited about it. You know, the future. So not only are you working with the school district right now but you're also in a new band. The new band that I'm working with, I uh, just put together a band called the Sons of Soul. Really, really excited about this. Uh, myself, Reggie Gonzalez, and Bruce Williamson are big Bruce as he goes by. Uh, Who's a singing wonder. Yes, he's... yes, man. So it's three powerful guys, you know, that can do any genre of music, whether it be country and western, R&B, rock, soul, whatever. We can do it. We're all basically church kids that are now, you know, getting an opportunity to spread our music across the world. And you can be seen now at... Working on a couple new shows. Uh, April 29th will be at the Aliante in the okay. Access Showroom. There's a show that's coming up on the 24th. I'm not at liberty to say yet because they have not made it public, but keep your ears open for the Sons of Soul. We just recently finished a show at the uh, Silverton, which was our debut. Awesome night, overwhelming response, man. People came out and just had a great time. Las Vegas loves you. Well, thank you, man. Las Vegas loves you, you, respects you. You know, we go to the same church, Mountaintop. Yes. And whenever Bishop House wants a song sung right, <laughs> he'll pass the mic to you. <laughs> you get some wonderful opportunities there, man. I'm a part of a growing ministry there with the men, and I'm leading the men now that I'm not singing on a, on a regular basis. So I'm getting some other opportunities. So on top of law enforcement, music, family man, I'm also a part of a young ministry as well. When was it that you decided that you're going to go into law enforcement and sing? I mean, you know, most kids grow up and they just want to be basketball stars, but 
What was it in you that said, hey, I want to do some law enforcement and sing? I'm going to wear both those hats. Most people don't wear those hats at the same time. They all came at different times. Uh, I either wanted to be an attorney, a fireman, or a law enforcement officer. Uh, school was not the top of my list. Mm -hmm. I saw a fire. I went to a fire and saw that, uh, no, I don't want to play with fire. So law enforcement <laughs> is something that came about after the military. Uh, the military gave me an opportunity to kind of find myself. Uh, the singing started, uh, well, I started off as a drummer. My father was a preacher, so, you know, you had to do everything in the church. So I started off as a drummer. In high school, I wanted to run for the homecoming king. A friend of mine said, hey, man, why don't you sing? I heard you messing around. And he says, hey, and the girls like singers. <laughs> Shameless as it is, man, that's how I started singing. Wow, so you got into it, and you just kept it going. Yes, yes, kept it going, and it's taken me throughout the world um, I've been throughout the United States between eight, nine, ten times. I've been abroad. So I've traveled man, and had some great opportunities, done some television. I've recorded. I did my first gospel project uh, about two years ago. So, you know, I've had some great opportunities. Congratulations on that, too. Thank you. I think it was a wonderful project. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful project. So what is, when, when you're writing music, because you write as well, right? Yes. When you're writing music, what do you tap into in order to, to get that out, that passion, that, that, that message from your heart to the paper, what do you tap into? Usually you try and, and relate it to a situation, um, whether you're talking about love, whether I'm talking about God, whether I'm talking about uh, current situations in the world, you try and tap into it and find something personal in it where you identify with it. And that's what helps to create. It's like making a meal. Um, you have the basic ingredients and then every now and then you start putting in the extras. I think that's beautiful. So, being in the schools, kids look up to you. Kids look up to the school police officers. For the most part. Uh, things have changed in a sense where you're starting to see a lack of respect for authority. Uh, so, what I try and get my officers to understand is that to go where the kids are, meet them at their level as it relates to common conversation. There are times when you have to be the authority. And there are times when you have to be the person that happens to be wearing a uniform. So that's the, the thing as we juggle, you know, we try and get an understanding of, you know, what are they dealing with in their communities? What's the lingo? It, no matter what kids tell you, kids are bilingual. They have their own language, you know. Oh, so I know that's right. we try and tap into that, um, listen to the music that they're listening to. It gives you an idea of what they're going through. So, Do you think it's a different group of kids that you're dealing with now than when we were growing up? Yes. Even in the 25 years that I've seen, you know, the kids here in the county, they've changed. You know, a lot has changed. So um, we're sometimes in an era of entitlement uh, where kids think that just because I'm here, I deserve to get certain things. Uh, and that's not all kids, you know, but you see that in a majority of situations. And there is still some great parenting going on. I don't care what anybody says. There's still some great parenting that's going on where kids are responsible. Uh, they're learning about responsibility. Kids are becoming goal-oriented. Um, things that we didn't even think about, you know, back in the day. Kids are now entrepreneurs at early ages. So, you know, so there's, it's a balance. So you're really a mentor to kids as well? Yes, yes, yes. Over the years, uh, I think I've mentored about 35, 36 young men over the wow, years. Where I've had some of them that were troublemakers. Now they're business owners. They are fathers. Um, they are husbands community leaders um, so it's great to see those types of things what is it that you tell them that causes them to click or what turns on their light? it's consistency you know telling them that if you do the work and this is something that was always told to me so it said pass on the knowledge so if they do the work there's a reward for it um, right now they see everybody else is out there doing these flash things you know those things will come to you if you do the work do some of those kids still come back to you? Well, I'm calling them kids, but they're probably young men at this point, right? Yes, yes. It's great to see them when they come back with their kids and they say, hey, you know, Mr. Young did such and such, or a lot of them call me Pops, um, where, you know, I'm Pops, I'm, I'm Uncle, uh, to a, a lot of them. Uh, it's great around holiday time. A lot of times they'll come into town or they'll just stop by and say hello, see how you're doing. Um, out in my music career now, I get a chance to see a lot of these young men that are looking up going, hey, that looks like, oh man, you gotta be kidding me. That's the cop. 
you know. So it's, it's singing comedy. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it gives me a very interesting uh, day, you know, interesting lifestyle, you know, to get a chance to mix with a lot of different kids. So to the young men that you've mentored who are now fathers, is there a message that you can give to young men who are being fathers, who want to be a father, maybe to kids that aren't theirs, who want to mentor young men? What are some guidelines that you can give them that will help the next generation? The biggest thing is consistency. Um, your message has to be the message. Um, whether it's, you know, stay in school, whether it's work hard, whether it's be respectful, whatever the message is, make sure that the message stays consistent. Um, one of the things that when I look at all the things that I've done over the years, sometimes time was not the, the thing that I always had, even with my own kids, you know, because you're doing so much. So understand, you know, time is very important to your kids. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. You have such a strong message and such a passion for making a difference. And I think that's what makes you, you. Thank and that's you. what I've always admired about you. You're everywhere making a difference and standing up and have such a dynamic voice and what a wonderful message. Thank you, man. And I just love what, I love what you're doing. Thank you, man. And I'm pre appreciating what you're doing and watching you uh, from the vision that you started with your toe tag monologues, man, on how that's grown and how impactful that that is. So definitely know that I'm proud of what you're doing as well. Well, you remember the acronym TEAM, Together mm -hmm. Everybody Achieves More. So everybody has a role to play. Just like in your production, everybody has a role. Just like in any organized sport, everybody has a role. So if you play your part, the team doesn't fail. I think that's awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank Mr. Ken Young for coming out. And he's going to be the next guest host on the Lillian McMorris Show. And I think he's going to do an incredible job. He's given so much to the community. He's such a wonderful talent and gift. And that's why we're so honored to have him here with us today. Again, my name is R. Byron Stringer, and I'm the writer and the producer of the Toe Tag Monologues. And if you're interested in getting involved with the Toe Tag Monologues, please go to www.toetags.org. We'd love to bring our message to your school, your church, your community center. It's all about saving lives. It's all about making a difference in kids' lives. And those are the types of people that you've been watching today. You've been seeing people who are making a difference, people who are reaching and touching the future generations because they care, because they matter. Thank you for tuning in to The Lily McMore Show, and we'll see you again soon.